Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to make an object which, when placed near um, an avatar's face, will play a sound. This is a request from Princess, who asked how to do this uh, for food, etc., but it can also be used for other um, distance based operations. You know, if one object is closer to another one, it's uh, similar principles. Let's get started. Um, to start with, I'm going to show you uh, what we're going to build. So here I have this uh, hamburger, and when I put it quite close to my face, hamburger. You'll see that we get the uh, hamburger sound effect. So let's uh, build this. I'm going to hop into Smooth POV here, and then over here you'll see I have a hamburger that doesn't do this, and the hamburger. hamburger, the hamburger sound effect. So let's get started. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use a node called nearest user head, which is a very useful node. Um, it uh, Basically, we'll get you the nearest user's head. There's not really many other ways to say that. Um, I'm going to show you how it works and talk about how it works now, though. So at the root of the Logix node menu, I'm going to go to Avatar and then Nearest User Head. I'm going to double trigger on that, and we'll see Nearest User Head. And I'm just going to put that next to the hamburger here. Now, Nearest User Head is very simplistic, um, uh, but it's also very powerful. Um, You'll see the, uh, that it has three inputs and three outputs, which can make the node seem confusing, but I'm going to go through each one in turn. We're going to start with the outputs, though, because those uh, should uh, help you out. So the top output here is the head slot, which is the actual um, slot of the head. So the um, this head, that's what it's showing right now, this head. Um, the user is the nearest user that is its near. And so you'll see here, this is me. If there are other users um, in the world, it would be the person that had their head nearest to this node, and that's also very important. It's the nearest to the node by default, so uh, when I bring it closer to my head, I am nearer to it. You can see that more effectively if we pull out a display node for the uh, last output, which is called distance. And if I leave that up there and I bring the node closer to my face, you'll see that it's uh, decreasing in the number, and when I bring it away, it is, uh, the number is growing. So that's the outputs. The inputs are a uh, reference slot, so that's where you want to like detect from. So you'll see right now that it's detecting from the the node's visual itself, from this card here. If you want it to detect from um, a you know an actual reference point, then uh, that's where you'd plug one in. We're about to do that in one second though. Um, the next option is the ignore user option. This is useful if you have a gadget on your avatar um, that uh, needs to react to other users coming close to it, but not you, because like you are like you're the owner of it. Um, a few people use this for their um, boopable snoots. You know, when you uh, when you boop their snoot, you get an, a sound effect. Uh, people use this one. Um, people also use colliders and stuff for that. Um, but uh, you can also use that here, and that's where ignore user would come into handy. Uh, and then the last input is a uh, ignore AFK input. And what this will do is it will ignore people who are out of the world. So you know when you see them sort of um, transparent and gray-like, that's when they're in a different world. It will ignore those users if this is set to true. So that's the uh, inputs and outputs. Uh, we're now going to hook this up to make the sound. To do that, we're going to go ahead and hook up that reference that I just spoke about, the top one here. So to do that, I'm going to switch to the uh, developer tooltip here, and I'm going to inspect the hamburger by hitting secondary, opening the inspector, and going to the top. The hamburger is quite a complicated model. Um, there'll be a link to the model in the video description. And with the hamburger at the top here, we're going to grab the word hamburger here with our logic tip. And you'll see it says uh, hamburger on my uh, logic tip here. I'm going to turn to the side here and just hit secondary. And now you'll see that we've got the slot card for this. I'm going to leave the inspector open over there so that we can uh, pack the logics later. And I'm going to plug in the uh, top here where it says slot by pulling out a ribbon with primary and putting it into the top of the nearest user head. And so now it's measuring from the hamburger and not from the card, which is super useful in this case. So with that done, now we need to um, detect whether it's close enough to my head that I might be sort of eating it. And the easiest way to do that is to just leave this display node out and then kind of just sort of figure it out. So I'm going to grab this this hamburger, put it close to my face, and you'll see sort of 0 0.15 or 1.6 is about when it's close enough to my head to make sense. This will change depending on the scale of the user or the scale of the hamburger, so do keep that in mind and uh, play around a bit. This is a basic tutorial, and we're not going to go into how to accommodate for extra sizes or multiple sound effects or even um, the animations or particles that you might have seen on other edible objects. This is simply just going to be a sound, but it should get you started. 
So we're going to start with um, a uh, looking to see if it's uh, you know 0.1 or less um, uh, distance away from me. So to do that, we need a comparison node. So we're going to open up the node browser here, and I'm going to go to operators, and we will need less than or equal to. Whenever you're comparing a um, float, which this um, cyan data type is, always use less than or equal to or greater than or equal to because floats are very precise. They've got a lot of numbers there. You can see that's 5, 8, and then there's a bunch of numbers here which I can't really even read. They're going too fast. And so that's why you use um, less than or equal to because that means that uh, it will uh, not be have to be exact, yeah, uh, uh, as exact. Do less than or equal to. Spawn that in the world of primary, and then we're going to plug in the uh, distance, which is this output, into the top. And then for the secondary, we're going uh, the second input. We're going to just spawn a uh, input node here with secondary, and we're going to input zero point one five. And then we're going to pull out the um, gray output push secondary so we can see it. And now we're going to drag the hamburger close to our face, and you'll see that that turns true when it is close to our face. So now we can detect that it's close to our face using this Boolean output here. So now what we need to do is make that play a sound. Now we're going to use play one shot to do that. There are other ways to play sounds. Play one shot's good enough for this case though. So to do that, first of all, we're going to go back to the logix node root and we're going to go to audio and we're going to spawn in audio clip input and play one shot. And then we're going to plug the audio clip input into the pink input of the play one shot. And we're going to plug uh, the slot in as well. So here there's the slot. Plug that one into the um, green input here, the root. What this will do is it will ensure that the sound comes from the hamburger and not from this node itself. Um, there are other videos I do um, where I cover play one shot and we do the same thing here. We want the sound effect to come from the object, not from the, uh, the card itself. I did forget one thing that we need to do here, which is we need a um, an impulse. And so to do that, we're going to go back to the uh, logic node root, and we're going to go to flow, and we're going to spawn a fire on true node. So here's fire on true. And so we plug the uh, gray output here of the uh, less than or equal into the fire on true, and then we plug the output of fire on true into the top of the play one shot. And then we can tidy up a little bit. So we don't need this anymore. We don't need this. We don't need this and we don't need the cast nodes behind it there we go you'll see fire on true um, has a secondary input you should always specify it wherever possible in this case we can actually use the nearest user here um, and what this will do is it means that the uh, impulse will come from the user which the hamburger is closest to and that's desirable because it means that they will usually hear it first and they will initiate the playing of the sound and then everyone else will hear it Last thing we need to do here um, to complete the logic is to just plug in the sound effect. To do that, find your sound effect. Here's the uh, sound effect I'm going to be using, the hamburger, hamburger one. Feel free to use your own models or your own sound effects here. Um, I'm just using this one as an example because I have these resources to hand. I'm going to grab it with my laser here. And I'm going to turn so that the laser is through the audio clip input card. And I'm going to let go. And now you'll see that it says audio clip hamburger and not audio clip and null. And so with that, that's now done. We can now test it by grabbing this hamburger and bringing it close. Hamburger. And you'll see hamburger that we get the hamburger sound every time it gets close. This doesn't time how long it's close to your face or do any other like things like that. All it does is play the sound. If you're interested in more um, eating effects, etc., then uh, do let me know. I can do a more advanced tutorial, but I wanted to get you uh, get you going with the with the basics here, and then you can uh, have a play. You know, check out some of our other videos to see other items and you know, put them together and kind of sort of, uh, you know, hack and put stuff together um, in, uh, in a way that gets the, the goal that you want. So now that we know that Logix works, we're just going to pack it into the object and call it done. So we're going to go over to the hamburger inspector here that I've got. Click the top, click the star, which makes a child object. We're going to remove child and change that to logics. I'm going to grab hamburger-logics and then hit set packing route. And then I'm going to go ahead and push secondary on any of these nodes and they'll vanish. And then we can delete this card here and then we're done.
I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, developer tooltip here and deselect tool, which gets rid of the gizmo. And now... Hamburger. Hamburger. There's that hamburger now that I can put to my face and we can hear the... Hamburger. Hamburger sound effect. Once again, this was a request from Princess, so thank you for the request. I will uh, see you next time. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the uh, comments below. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.